Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to be talking a little bit of MMA. So I've not done some MMA in a while, so I hope you've missed me. Now look, what I've um, what I've been thinking about is Kamaru Usman. Like since the weekend, the question I've sort of been asking myself, and this is the question that's also the title of this video, is is Kamaru Usman the GOAT? Is he the GOAT? Like the greatest of all time? Is he the best to ever do it in MMA? And I know that that sounds like an unpopular or stupid notion to some people, but hear me out, hear me out. The reason why I'm saying this is you've got to look at the other contenders. Like the other contenders for the greatest of all time title. Generally, you're looking at sort of John Jones, Anderson Silva, George St. Pierre, Demetrius Johnson. Some people say Fedor, but I don't agree with that. So the four main ones are Jones, Anderson, Demetrius Johnson, you know, those type of people in GSP. So you can break it down person to person. So John Jones obviously has had a very, very dominant run at light heavyweight in the past. A very, very dominant run. And he's had more title defences than Kamaru Usman has had. However, you have to look at the performance enhancing drugs. You can't ignore that in the case of John Jones. And the reason why I say that is because in the fights recently where he's not tested positive, he looks drastically different. Like he's have been having closer fights. He had closer fights with, you know, he had a close fight with Thiago Santos. He had a close fight with Dominic Reyes. You know, he doesn't quite look the same. Even against Ovin St. Pru, he didn't quite look the same. So I have to, I kind of looking at it in terms of what my eyes tell me, I have to believe he was on something. I have to. I mean, I know he made, he made all the excuses and the UFC likes him, so they covered up for him, but I don't believe you can say that John Jones is greater than Kamaru Usman. Because Usman's been through the same amount of people. He's got a bigger consecutive win streak than John Jones. Never tested positive. And, you know, if you really care about all the shit out of the octagon, um, Kamaru Usman never got into any of that bullshit. He's never beat his wife. He's never done a hit and run. Never taken cocaine, you know, to anyone's knowledge. So if you care about that, I don't personally, but if you care about that, then Usman's never done any of that either. But the biggest factor here is the 15, 15 fight win streak in the UFC. Now this is something a lot of people have, have missed and it snuck up on them. And the reason why is because a lot of his wins, he went through pretty much the whole division before he became the champion. Like he sent Sean Strickland pack into 185. And Sean Strickland is now a top contender in that division and a very, very, like, he can beat a lot of those guys that are above him as well, I think. I think Sean Strickland is very, very legit. He walks people down. You know, Usman beat him easily. Unanimous decision. Usman also beat Leon Edwards, who's probably the one of the only compelling fights that are actually left for Usman. I know, I know that recently they've leapfrogged Leon in the rankings and they've put Vicente Luque and Kamzat Chemaev in front of him. But listen, that's not fair. It's really, really not fair. I think Leon should be there. Unfortunately, he's had to take a fight with Jorge Masvidal, which, you know, he might lose. But other than that, you've got a, you're then looking at sort of next generation fighters, is what I call them. Because they're kind of the new crop of contenders, like Luke and Chemaev. They're kind of the new contenders. I mean, if you look at the top 10, I, for a long time, really wanted to see Usman versus Wonderboy. But after seeing Usman, um, sorry, Wonderboy versus Burns, I don't think that's a compelling fight. I think Usman would take him down and probably just hold him there. I don't, I don't see anything that Wonderboy can do. Additionally, Usman striking is improving all the time. But... Look at the names that he beat before he was champion. Like, it's literally Dasanios, Edwards, you know, Sean Strickland, Damian Meyer. All those guys at the time were top contenders in the division. Like, they were top 10 fighters. So this is, this is something which has to be considered. He's beaten so many guys before he even became the champion. And then after, the, after he won the title, so he wins the title from Tyron Woodley, he's continued just to excel. And he has come through some adversity. So, like, he's definitely better than John Jones. Anderson Silva obviously had 16 wins in a row. Never tested positive during his main run. But he did test positive afterwards. Now, that's a big, that's a big question mark over Anderson Silva's claim to, to the GOAT, in my opinion. 
even though I loved watching Anderson fight, he was one of my favourite fighters ever to watch, I, I can't sort of put him in that conversation anymore because we don't know for certain that he was clean. Well, I mean, the test t t one of the tests tells us he wasn't. So, I, I don't know. It's a hard one with Anderson Silva, but I don't, I don't think he was clean, and I think that puts Usman potentially ahead of him. And bearing in mind, Anderson is the only person with a bigger win streak than Usman at the moment. Anderson's got 16 fights. Usman's now got a 15-fight win streak in the UFC. 15 fights. It's ridiculous in a sport like MMA. Unheard of. So then you've got, after Anderson, you've got GSP and Demetrius Johnson. And the main argument that can be made for those two is that Demetrius, you know, Demetrius has the record for the most title defences. So he's won more title fights than Usman has. He's not, won more fight, he's not had a bigger fight win streak than Usman, but he's won more title fights. And I think that's a legitimate, you know, a relatively legitimate argument. However, you have to look, then look back, like I've already said, at the people that Usman was beating before he was even champion, because he'd cleaned a lot of the division out before he was champion. And even if you look at it now, you're looking at numbers one, two, three, he's beating all of them. You're looking at Luke, Luke Chamaya, if he hasn't beaten, they're like ranked four and five, and then Edwards at six, he's beaten. And then, like, you've got Chiesa and Magni sort of holding up the back of the top ten. They're, in my opinion, they, neither of them have the skills to, to pose Usman any problems. And I don't think many people would disagree with me on that. And Wonderboy, you know, might have been a good fight before Usman had developed his striking. And, you know, maybe a few years ago before Wonderboy had had the injuries that he's had. But he's on the decline now, and it's going to be very hard for him to make his way back up anyway. Even if you did believe Wonderboy beats, you know, beats Usman or has a chance of beating Usman, then it's a long way back for him anyway. So I think Usman's destroyed that top ten, and he could keep going. Like he could, he could potentially get to twenty wins. You know, if if Chimaev's not as good as everyone thinks he is, which you know I think he's a pretty good fighter. I don't like him. Um, but if he's not as good as everyone thinks he is, Usman beats him as well. Quite simple. So, who have we got? We've gone through John Jones, Anderson Silva. We were talking about GSP. GSP is probably the biggest threat. Obviously, he ruled the same weight division that Usman did, and you could argue that GSP cleared it out twice. And then he went to a different division and won the title, and then gave it up immediately. So I think you could definitely argue that GSP... I think the GSP argument is the most compelling, to be honest, as the GOAT, because he's been to another weight class, he won the title there, you know, albeit very, very short-lived. But ultimately, Usman, what I'm trying to say with this video is that whilst you can't at the moment definitively say that Usman's the GOAT, I don't think you can, but he's definitely up there. Like, you can't debate that he's already, like, all-time great status. Like, a 15-fight win streak does that on its own. Five title defences does that on its own against the best guys in the division. The very best guys, like Colby Covington, incredible fighter, very, very well-rounded, great cardio. Like, there's not many others in the top ten that can beat that guy. I don't think Masvidal beats him. I don't necessarily think Edwards beats him. You know, Chemaev and Luke, they're kind of unknown entities at this moment. Um... But I don't think, other than those two, I can't see, and that's only a potential, because we don't really know what they can do yet. They've not faced the competition. So other than sort of those two, I can't see anyone else in the top 10 beating Covington. Newsman's beat him twice. So that those two fights in itself speak volumes about what Usman is able to do. He's beat Masvidal twice. You know, is Masvidal as good as everyone says he is? I don't personally think so. But knocking him out, knocking out Masvidal, you can't argue that guy is a tough motherfucker. I mean, we already knew from the first fight, even though Masvidal had a short camp, we already knew in the first fight that Usman was a bad stylistic matchup for him. The way that he was just able to hold him against the fence and stomp on his toes and all this sort of thing, that was a bad matchup for Masvidal. But in the second fight, Usman took him down the first round, wins the first round, and then decides to stand up with him in the second round. And then he knocks him the fuck out. And Masvidal has never been knocked out before, despite fighting really good strikers throughout his career. Like he's fought Donald Cerrone, he's fought Nate Diaz, none of those people, none of these people that everyone loves ever knocked out Jorge Masvidal. 
And Kamaru Usman did it in the second round of their second fight. And then he's beaten, he's beaten Gilbert Burns, who maybe gives him the most problems, I don't know. Because of the... Gilbert Burns has got a lot of power and a lot of jiu-jitsu, a lot, obviously very good jiu-jitsu. So I think he, he might be the guy who can give Usman the most problems, but Usman took his best shot, recovered, and knocked Burns out with a jab. So I don't even know how compelling that rematch is. I would like to see Burns versus Covington, because I, want to, I would want to see what happens in that fight. I do think they're, the ne- they're probably the next best two guys, if that makes sense. So I think they're the next best two guys in that division. But I still think Usman's are way ahead of both of them. And they won't, they won't do that match because they're not going to want to knock Burns out of contendership. They might want to see that rematch before anything else. So you can't definitively say that Usman's the GOAT right now, as I've been saying, but it's a bit, it's a bit mad what he's been doing. You can't ignore it. He's got an argument. Like the 15 fight win streak in itself and the people that he's beaten, that gives him an argument. You could argue this division's better than it's ever been. And he's beaten nearly everyone already. Like Colby Covington, has there ever been, like did GSP ever beat anyone as good as Colby Covington? The GSP, he probably did beat people that were sort of similar to Jorge Masvidal, but Gilbert Burns? Like did GSP ever fight anyone that could knock him out as well, could knock him out on the striking and then potentially submit him if he took him down. I don't, I don't really think he did. Like, Carlos Condit's maybe the closest thing to that, but I don't think Carlos Condit was as good of a fighter as Gilbert Burns or as dangerous of a fighter as Gilbert Burns. So I think two of those two people are two of the best welterweights the UFC has ever seen, and Usman's beat them both. So I think he's, he's definitely up there, like, because GSP is a welterweight... Usman's definitely, at the very least, the second greatest welterweight of all time. Like, he's definitely surpassed anything Matt Hughes did. And Matt Hughes was fantastic. So he's definitely, the, you know, the second greatest. You could even argue the greatest if you think he's beaten better competition than GSP, which, as I've just explained, is quite a legitimate argument. You could argue that he's beaten better competition. Like, you could say even RDA, like... Did GSP ever beat someone as well-rounded and as much pressure as RDA? Now, I'm not saying that GSP wouldn't have beaten RDA, but were there any fighters like that around in his time? I don't know. You know, he was beating people like Koscheck and Fitch and, you know, those type of people and Dan Hardy, you know, and you're looking at Koscheck and no disrespect to those guys because at the time they were the best in the world. But if you look at Koscheck's skill set in today's sort of day and age, it, it's wrestling with an overhand right. You know, he could shoot a takedown, he could defend takedowns, and he, could, he had a good overhand right that was powerful and could knock you out. Beyond that, his, his striking skills weren't anywhere near up to scratch with the guys that are currently top welterweights. You know, the striking is just... The striking M- MMA... MMA is the thing that's improved most. Like the talent in the striking department has just skyrocketed because it's the case where everyone knows a bit of grappling. So you can't just take people down and hold them there anymore. Unless you're a Khabib or you know, even a newsman. You can't really rely on that as your strategy. So everyone needs to be able to strike. So I, I do actually think that a couple more wins and I think it will be less in dispute. Like, will he won't ever. The thing is with Usman is he'll never go. He probably won't go up a weight because Adesanya's the champion at one eighty five, and I don't see if I, I don't know if I see anyone beating Adesanya anytime soon. And Usman is thirty four. He is thirty four, so it's possible he retires within the next three years. I'm not saying that will definitely happen, but it's possible because you don't know. Some people get old overnight. And he's never going to go up to middleweight because him and Adesanya are buddies. And I don't think... I don't see anyone that can beat Adesanya in that division. As of right now, anyway. You know, so I think what it comes on to now is the only person that's going to beat Usman is a new generation contender. And there's only one of those in the top ten. Like, I mean, I know you could argue Vicente Luque is a sort of new generation. He's quite a lot younger than Usman. I think he's 29 and Usman's 34, 35. So you could argue Vicente Luque, but you know if you look at what he's got, he's got a purple belt in jiu-jitsu, he's got very good Muay Thai skills, good kicker, but you can argue he hasn't really got anything Usman hasn't seen before. 
Like that's a ve- I think that's quite a legitimate argument that I don't I don't know if he's got anything whose man has not seen. So to to be honest, I whilst Luke is a very exciting fighter and very very good, like again one of the best one of the best welterweights around at the moment. There's no doubt. I don't see him being able to to beat Usman. I think Usman can probably take him down and avoid the submissions. Like Luke has proved that he's got some good submissions off his back, but Usman's top game is is totally risk averse. I don't see him getting caught in anything by anyone other than Gilbert Burns. I, I just don't see submission. I don't think that's a viable way to beat Usman. I don't see it, and I'm not sure that I see anyone knocking him out either. Well, there might be someone that can, but I, I don't see it. At this point, it's very easy to say this because overnight it will, you know, that will change. Like someone will come and beat him one day, but at the moment it's just hard to see anyone stopping him. Like he's got such a heart of a champion, he's got power, he's got great striking skills, he's got an amazing wrestling background, he's got good top control, good risk of a solid top control with decent ground and pound. Like there's very little you can do to stop that. You know, good cardio as well. So his skill set is, there's nowhere in which you think, oh, he's not that good there. Do you know what I mean? Like a few a few fights ago, you could maybe have said, well, someone could knock him out. He's quite hittable. And that's why people th- were so interested in the Masvidal fight. But I think he's kind of proven that that's not really going to happen that easily, if that makes sense. So long and short of what everything I've just said, I don't see Vicente Luque beating Kamaru Usman. As I said, he's not fought Wonderboy, he's not fought Chiesa, he's not fought Magni, but there's nothing that those guys bring to the table that I think he couldn't deal with. I think he would out wrestle Magni. I think he would out strike Chiesa without having to, you know, without having to take him down. And I think Wonderboy could probably take him down and hold him, you know, mix that with a bit of striking, it'll be a five round decision. I think that's what's gonna happen. Um then the only one who's, you know, Leon Edwards is is quite a compelling fight, like a relatively compelling fight, because Leon's made so many improvements. And he is a better striker than Usman, like he's a better technical striker than Usman, but the thing is, is the, the wrestling that Leon Edwards has come up against, you'd, it's, it's difficult because he'd really need to be tested against like a Colby Covington or someone like that to know whether or not he can. He actually stands a chance against Usman. Like he's obviously improved his grappling defense because, you know, he's beaten Rafael de Sanjos. Um, Rafael de Sanjos did a really good job on him actually. You know, he's beaten beaten Nate Diaz recently, but you know, I, I don't consider Nate Diaz a serious threat. I really don't. So I don't really think that's as, that win is as big of a deal as everyone's making it out to be. And whilst I'm English and I want Leon to do well. I don't see that win as a big deal in terms of him being able to beat Usman. So his striking's definitely got better and better and better, and his grappling's definitely got better. So I think Leon has improved a lot, and I think we almost we kind of need to see that fight. But he's not beating Rafael de Sanjos. De Sanjos is nowhere near the wrestler or grappler that Usman is. So that Leon Edwards hasn't proven that he'll be able to do anything different to what he did last time. He hasn't proven he'll be able to stop those takedowns. So I don't, I don't necessarily buy the fact that Leon has improved enough to be able to beat Usman. I know some people are saying that, but I don't think that's necessarily true. I think we have to get them in there and find out. But you've also got to factor in that Usman's striking has Im- improved immeasurably since moving to Tre- Trevor Whitman. You know, I don't think, I don't think there's any like debate about it. His striking is really, really fucking good now. He can kick hard, he can punch hard, he's got a great jab. Really, really good jab. So unless Leon Edwards were to go and beat Colby Covington or Gilbert Burns, I don't really see how anyone can justify thinking he'll beat Usman in a rematch. Like he's done, he's had a great win streak, which credit to him for that, you know, he's won eight fights in a row, beating some decent, decent competition. And he probably does deserve another shot but there's no proof that he's got the skills to beat Usman either. And the only other one in the top 10, and this is the only person that I'm gonna focus on right now, is Kamzat Chemaev. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not, on a hype, I'm not on the hype train with this guy yet, and I don't, I don't like him, I think his attitude stinks. I think he's cocky, I think it's, 
you know, I wouldn't say any of this to his face. I think he's cocky. I think he's obnoxious. I think he's way above his station in terms of the shit he's talking. You know, I think they've promoted him way too early in the rankings. He does not deserve to be number five because he hasn't beaten any of the people that are below him to 10. Like, he's just beat Jing Liang. However, he's been nothing short of dominant in the UFC against decent opposition as well. He's making people that... He's making people look like they don't know how to fight, that do know how to fight and know how to fight very well. He's making those people look like they don't know how to fight. And that's not something that you can just ignore. And I think Kamzat's that sort of like new generation contender that I've been talking about. And that's what I mean because it's like uh, he's got that sort of Khabib style where he'll sort of tripod your leg and then get the wrist and people don't seem to be able to get him off. Like he's just so strong and he's got such good positioning with his balance. Now whether that wrestling beats Usman's wrestling over a five round fight, we don't know. You know, is he a better striker than Usman? I don't personally think so. Um, he's not done anything to prove that, but lifting that guy up last fight and chatting shit while he was doing it, whilst I don't like him very much, I can't really ignore that he's a threat. Like he's definitely a threat. But he's the only one I would say in the top 10 at the moment that's got a style that we haven't already seen Usman deal with in some way or another, because he's got that sort of Dagestani wrestling, and you know, there's only a few of those guys around. That they're, they're they are all coming into the UFC. The Islam Makachev looks really good. I think he is going to be the lightweight champion, if I'm totally honest. Um, I feel bad for saying that because I like I like Poirier and I like Oliveira, um, but I don't think either of them are going to beat him, to be quite honest. I don't think either of them are. But Chemayev's still a question mark because he's not beat anyone inside the top 10 yet, but he's beaten a guy that's just outside of it and beat him very, very convincingly. Like, worryingly convincingly. And the thing is, is Dana will give this guy a shot. I wouldn't be surprised. The thing is, is Masvidal could beat Edwards, and I wouldn't be surprised if Dana puts Cam's out right in there. Even if Edwards, Edwards wins, there's still a chance of that happening. There's still a chance of that happening, but I don't know. Have they? One thing I need to look up after this video because I didn't look this up properly, but I don't know if they've scheduled Kamzat to fight Vigente Luque, which would be a good fight, actually. But yeah, as I was saying, I think the only person that's potentially got a chance of beating Usman is Chimaev, and I don't say that because I think Chimaev will definitely beat him. But to me, I look at all Usman's fights, and it's like he's fought every style. He's fought a jiu-jitsu, you know. Jiu-Jitsu world champion that can punch really hard and has good striking. He's fought a wrestler that can go for days and has really good striking. And then he's fought like a backstreet brawler who's got really good boxing, very fast hands. Um, and then obviously he's beaten other wrestlers on his way up. And to win the title, he beat Tyron Woodley. So he's beating, he's beating other wrestlers, he's beaten strikers, he's beaten Jiu-Jitsu guys. There's no, there's no style that he hasn't faced in that top 10 other than Kamzat Chemaev. And that's all I'm saying. I don't want people to think I'm saying Chemaev will definitely beat Usman, because I don't think that for a second. I think Usman, I think it could be a very competitive fight, though, because Usman hasn't seen the kind of stuff that Chemaev is able to do. He's not seen that sort of style. I would want Usman to beat Chemaev, and I think if he does, once you start beating the, new, the next generation of contenders, like people who are younger and are smashing all the other guys in the division... Like once you start beating people like that, I think there's really no debate. I think it would be very hard to say he's not the greatest welterweight of all time. And then it would be getting increasingly harder to say he's not the GOAT. Like if he if he goes now and wins two, three more fights and de defends the title, you know, knocking people out, even beating the same guys again is really impressive because they've already faced him once and they know, you know, they know his style now. So to beat Burns or to beat Edwards again would be pretty incredible, if I'm honest. But I don't know. I think the purpose of this video is just to draw everyone's attention to this. Because I do think Usman's got a very good chance of... I think he's already in the conversation of greatest of all time. I have to say that. I think he's already in that conversation. I think he's ahead of John Jones and Anderson Silva by default. And, you know, I think in terms of GSP, I think he's catching up with him in terms of that greatest welterweight if he hasn't already surpassed him. And I think he's catching up to Johnson and GSP and being the greatest of all time. 
Again, this is just my opinion, but I think I've been quite balanced in the things that I've said. So if anyone's got a comment, disagreement, agreement, whatever, please post it below. As always, please subscribe to the channel if you're new. Please like the video because that will help me out tremendously. But thank you very much for listening.